Hello everyone. Welcome to Education Talk. This is Anil. We are working on Flowable series. Today we are going to cover in-depth details on BPMN process. So as you know, we are working on loan application. We discussed in the last session about CMMN in detail and today we are going to talk about BPMN. Let's have a look. There is also quite a bit of detail to dig into the PPMN process model in the example that we talked about as well as some additional tweaks that can be made. So let's open Flowable Design. And we can open process model from this case. Application process and then loan application. So this is one of the way uh, to navigating to the right process or you can also choose the quick links provided in the menu option in this header. You might have seen the process diagram when you ran the application as it is this process can be run standalone from the case model. If you remember from the new dialog in global engage this process was listed as available as well as the case itself. Also remember that the process, start of the process, the process task in the case had a start from, uh, to prompt from the applicant name. So for that, what you can do is you can open Flowable Engage in parallel as well, so that you can understand what we are talking uh, about it here. And there is detailed discussion and the session on it in the previous lectures. So from work, if you will see that there are four BPMN process model and currently we are talking about loan application, which is this. And you can see the loan application, which is also mentioned in the heading of this overall workflow. This process could also be started by another system, for example, by rest call to a flowable, including passing the name, the form on the start event. It's only displayed if you're starting the process directly from the flowable user interface. So talking about how this process gets initiated when we are clicking on the work and opening this form. So this is basically open the form associated to this workflow, which is this loan details. And you are providing some details to this form. So let me just quickly open so that you can also reference what we are talking in here. I'm not going to uh, much in detail for other work flows or the other uh, human task, but for this, uh, at least to set up some context uh, while we're talking about it. So this is the form that you are providing some information at the runtime, providing full name, age, nationality, uh, loan type, uh, requested loan and salary. And with which this is starting a workflow, which is depicted in here, uh, in this model. Yeah, this one, but the same thing can also be achieved by calling a rest endpoint. So from there, this human workflow task will be replaced by a service call. So for that, you need to use another activity, message start activity or another uh, task. So that uh, HTTP task kind of a activity to be able to like initiate this from a rest endpoint, more like calling a service. So the process is uh, shown in the new dialog along with the case and other process potentially a starter group or the potentially starter are the uh, user attribute for uh, in initiating and most of the cases we are just keeping this to the same user. So if you will look at this assigning, this is initiator, which means uh, those who are initiating the request, it will be assigned to them. Um, but since it's a, a first task and how about review application, we have configured this in a way that it will again be assigned to the same person. But in real world scenario, this will be any next approver or any other person not the same as get application detail applicant details same is the case with all these so for escalated review you might be seeing that it is uh, initiator but in real world scenario these are not the case all these are different persons acting on this particular workflow for a human a different human task now there is an important thing that we talked about decisions and flows. 
So often when defining a process, there is the need to consider a number of process rules that then affect how the process flows or additional data that can be inferred. Flowable supports decision tables defining using the DMN open specification. This is very important. If you talk about Oracle, so they have Oracle BRMS. If you talk about IBM as a product for similar solution, they have IBM ODM, operational data management. So they have all different kind of a business rules to the table. But if we think about how we can correlate this with other standard programming practice, yes, we do a configuration table or we use generally a table that contains the dynamic data, which helps you to take decision. So when the data in the table gets changed, your logic get also. So let's have a look what we are talking in here. If you click on loan advice, you will see that this is a decision task. This is the same icon here, decision task. So when we click on it, we can see that there is decision table reference. If we click on it, it will take us to the table like this. This is very similar to any RDBMS table with columns, rows, etc. But there is a special meaning with this table and how this can be even used as a service when we are consuming this in a flow. And also these are the configurations can be changed at runtime. There will be a separate session uh, on the daemon. But here we can have a quick uh, understanding how this is getting executed. So this table is set of variables and set of the rules conditions are met. In the decision table, there are four rules. So one, two, three, and four. There are four rules, each with two conditions and two actions. Looking at the first rule, it states that if the age is less than age is less than so this is how you are reading it if age is less than 24 and ignoring the home variable irrespective whatever the value uh, so there comes the dash uh, value then set the guidance value to some text and the default variable uh, value to reject young so need further checks is the you you might be seeing uh, there was an advice on the form when it reaches to the review so this is how it was calculated and from here it was uh, populating in the ui form in the default path it go as a reject so that is how the outcome is calculated if someone is less than 24 irrespective of what kind of loan they are looking at we will say young so need further checks and default path will go and reject same way if you want to read the other values right so age does not matter if the loan type is rented no collateral so consider viability and this will again go to reject scenario if age is greater than 64 and loan type is mortgage this is the use case that we picked up potentially overstep debt to consider and escalate. This is how you need to read this. And the same, uh, the flow is also meant to read the same combination and basis on that it chooses the path because of default path variable populated by this DMN. The rules will be tested from top and depending on the head policy stop at the first rules that succeeds. The hit policy is set by clicking on the initial letter of the hit policy shown in the top left corner of the table. So this is the hit policy. How we want that uh, DMN should be prioritized how the rule should be done. So this is how we can say first unique any priority rule order output order and collect. New rules can be added using the last row of the table or by inserting a rule at a particular point using the context menu available here we can insert the ad additional columns of conditions or actions can be created using the plus icon as you can see there are plus icon in here and we can start creating so a lot of uh, thing you can uh, actually uh, uh, create from this not not on this one but uh, from here you can create a lot of uh, different columns values and uh, you can even modify with this option.
an output column can also have a label and possible output values for both input and output columns it's possible to use an expression as the value condition and access to be defined and expression need to be start with curly braces and closed with curly braces and follow the dual expression syntax used throughout the flow well you might be seeing that angular kind of a uh, braces which is required at all the places notice in the decision table that there is a column that sets the default path variable this is used later in the exclusive gateway so if we can quickly show you how this is being read and changing your decision path so we are in workflow process and here if you see let's look at this condition so what it says if the loan outcome path is reject or the default path is reject this will go to this path same way if the default path is escalate same way if the default path is accept so how it is coming it is coming from loan advice and then it is also combined with your review application and that is how overall uh, things are going right you can collapse or open this from um, this particular option now so let me know this is the quick thing that i wanted to talk about uh, dmn or the decision management um, with respect to loan application there is a lot of thing that you can do basis on how you want to configure this table and how you want to take uh, outputs so these are the inputs and these are the output associated with this uh, dmn table and this is very useful i personally found that uh, this is very quick and efficient the reason is it is very close to the engine which is reading it in general if you put all this logic outside the bpm engine and putting it on some database table one thing is you need to have additional control mechanism who is changing what and the second thing is since it is additional database call outside the bpm purview it is a little slow and inefficient in comparison to reading directly from the DPM, dmn model available within the process engine next thing that we want to talk about generating documents part of the acceptance flow is to generate a letter with the details of the loan this is done using the generate document activity so for that let's open the flow again and here you can see the create letter this is very specific activity i didn't see this in other bpm i have worked so far where uh, you can you need to basically write it uh, manually with some java or other programming language but with flowable they are providing it out of the box feature you can use the create letter functionality you can provide some template model here this is the template model that is available so this is the template model i'm trying to open this show you how this is being read and then how it is generating the pdf out of it so yes this is how your flowable is doing all these so it's replacing these values at runtime and creating a pdf for you right so you might be remembering that there was an letter which was created as part of the workflow so this is how you can do and then there can be sub form then the nesting forms which is which can be the next topic one of the powerful features of level forms is sub forms so the next topic where we talk about forms and the nested forms let's see in our review application there is a form reference called details review if you click on it we can see that there is application details and beneath it there is a disabled form component if we talk about one of the powerful features of level forms is sub forms which allows you to include an existing form inside another this means you can create form fragment that can be brought together to create more complex forms 
or reuse a complex form with some additions. Here you can see the original loan details form is included at the top of the form with an additional text output field. This form is linked and there is a form reference to loan details. Whereas if we open the loan details, we can see the complete form is there. But since it's a reusable form, so within details review, you can see the reference of loan details along with one output text which provides the guidance. It saves a lot of efforts in terms of reusability of forms. Same read only form can be applied and showcased in the same manner in other tasks of the workflow. So today we discussed about process, we talked about DMN and then we talked about forms. I hope you liking all these sessions. Let me know if you have any feedback. There are a lot of upcoming sessions on enterprise as well as open source. We will also talk about the Docker based installation. So keep watching it and thanks for watching this session of the series.